It is Thursday, August 17th, and we are here, as you can see, in beautiful Malibu, California. It's quite an adventure. One of the great things about the, our profession is we get to travel the world, going to find the most exciting toys, banks, and soldiers there are. Our trip this time takes us to California, and we're sharing the beauty. We are. It is absolutely beautiful. We're so lucky to be here for the All American Collector Show that features not only antique toys that you're going to see today that we have here to feature, but it also features other antiques and advertising. And the show begins tomorrow, the 18th. It runs from 11 to 5 p.m. at the Glendale Civic Auditorium. And then it also opens on Saturday at 10 a.m. and it runs until 4 p.m. And if you'd like additional information, if you'd like to see the other vendors that will be at the show, or if you had any other questions, there's all kinds of contact information on theglendaleshow.com. So just jump on there and you'll find anything and everything that you would want to know about the show. And uh, what do you say, Ray? Let's get Let's to... Let's start showing them our, our wares. We thought we'd bring up a nautical theme since we have the beautiful Pacific behind us. And uh, we want to do this before the sun sets, so we got to get started. Okay, so first one we have here is a beautiful caret. Now this would be actually sort of known as an armed uh, merchant cruiser. Uh, these ships were sort of ships that they converted to make them into warships to protect the fleets as they, they sailed across the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. So it's essentially a merchant vehicle vessel that they would then add guns. So you have gun side guns and you have this one deck gun. It wasn't heavily armored. Um, but this is actually a very rare example of a correct. It's clockwork, it's 18 inches in length, it's all original, uh, really a nice ship. I wanted to show everyone um, something that we recently purchased. It is, and uh, Ray, how many manufacturers are there for boats? Well, there's a lot of different manufacturers, Bree. Uh, this is an example of Nuremberg style German tinsmith. So it's one of the, one of, I would say about 15 manufacturers that came from that Nuremberg area, uh, Markland being the best known, and then Corette and Bing are the second two here. Uh, they all produce clockwork versions. They also would do live steam, which actually had like a little burner that you would actually light and would create a boiler that would run the propeller. This is a single propeller. Some boats will have two, even three propellers on it. Um, so there were a number of different German manufacturers, but then the French had a number of manufacturers. Japanese mm -hmm. especially, they produce a lot, especially right after the war. There are quite a few manufacturers there. Well, that's very cool. Beautiful ship. Uh, I can nice actually, color. I can see it in the water behind us. Look. Sailing by the Malibu Pier. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, our correct. That's one of our highlights of the show. It is. So that'll be at our booth in Glendale. We hope to see you there. And next, we are moving on to a, we're going to stay in the German manufacturer toy category, to the Uhu, which is a layman toy, and... Uhu. This is a Uhu. <laughs> you have an Uhu. I want a Uhu too. Well, you can have a Uhu. Here's your Uhu. Oh, thank you. I haven't had one of these a long time. I know, I haven't either. <laughs> Delicious. So Chocolate good. goodness. And you who That was just, you. <laughs> just a little sidetrack there. Just kidding. But anyway, so um, this Uhu. That's an Uhu, not Uhu. a Yuhu. Get it that's straight. U -A -U. That's Y O O H O O. And then this <laughs> is U H U. So close, but. You now, know. Bree's the expert on these, so well, tell us about this toy. It's an amphibious car which is really cool and it is a it goes in water as well as on land but unfortunately this particular one will not float the toy version of it but what's interesting is Ernest Paul Lehman was very he got his inspiration from a gentleman by the name of Camille Janatsky who was a Belgian race car driver he won a race um, and set a world record at a course near Paris in 1899 and Ernest Paul actually saw a picture of him in a news. It's actually unclear where he found the picture of it, but this is a replica of that car. The because actual he was car. The so actual car. car. The actual car. 
and uh, he wanted to add it to his assortment. And at that time, batteries were very newly introduced to cars. So it was amazing that this car won its record by going over 100 kilometers per hour, which was under a minute mile, which at that time was just unbelievable. So I thought that that was a cool side It's a great story. little toy. I find it interesting that they made the toy. It's an amphib amphibious car. You would wind it up. And if you see, Bree, on the side of the wheels, they're actually like little paddles. So in reality, that's what would propel the car when it entered the water. That's now, neat. the toy was never made to float. So think of all those kids that got this brand new toy. They wound it up. They ran down to the pond. <laughs> they ran it right into it. And it sank to the bottom. <laughs> It is a rather rare toy, though. No, it really is, and he's got a little cloth. Um, I'm gonna call it a cape, cape on top of him there, which That's is when very capes neat. That's cool. His, <laughs> and um, it actually, yeah, like Ray pointed out, it says Yuhu on it, and a lot of uh, the layman toys. I don't think all of them do, but they do say layman across. Most, um, almost all of them, I believe, are marked layman. The and top they, or the bottom. And then this is the logo for layman on the side here. That's EPL, or as Paul Layman. So that was his logo. But it reminds me of, I mean, the only amphibious car that I've seen in real life is, are the Ducky Tour boats. Ducky Tour? Or boat amphibious cars. Well, you know, James cars. Bond had a car. Went in the water. I think it was a DeLorean. <laughs> I guess I'm not that big of a James Bond fan. Well, they've been around. <laughs> but, uh, so those were our layman. Actually, we have one more oh, layman to show you. One. And this gentleman goes by the name of Tut Tut. That's the tut top. And you can see him styling here as he uh, blows his horn. You can see right here. Well, that sounds very annoying. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that, Ray, because the interesting fact that, about this tour that is actually listed in the Lehman book are the, the, um, the Kingdom of Prussia police started uh, regulating the law for murder vehicles to have horns in 1901. So this is actually the first toy automobile with a horn. I didn't know that. Really? Mm -hmm. it's, I know like on this there's a bellows underneath here. Let me show it to you. Right here. And this bellows would actually compress and it would cause the horn to actually blow. So it's actually a working example. And I think if you look it up, tut tut means something that's very annoying. So it looks like a portly gentleman driving down the street blowing his horn. I guess a lot of people thought he was rather annoying. <laughs> well. But it's one knows. of my favorite layman toys. I think there's a lot of character to it. Uh, it's very comical in nature. And the satirism is, is very evident when you know what tut tut means. It is. It's very neat. And uh, also, a side note, tut tut is that's really the American pronunciation of it. So in Germany, it was pronounced tutu. He's a ballerina. <laughs> but a bit. You never know. I mean, he doesn't really look like one, but no, he doesn't he's have definitely, a for one. Yeah. He's definitely very cool. Beautiful condition. He has Great a beautiful example. condition. Lehman toys were fairly inexpensive. Uh, they were really toys that were meant for the people of the developing middle class. They were fairly affordable at the time. And today, although some are very rare, tut tut you can find, and so it's all about condition. So generally, if you're gonna pay a fair amount of money for one, you want it to be all original and in very nice condition. And that he is, so he will be available at our booth. So look out for him. Next, we are going to move back towards our nautical theme, ah, as American we sit here. Toys. And this is a rowboat. It was manufactured by a company called Ives. Jenny Lee. <laughs> Jenny Lee. We call it the Ives Oarsman is generally what it's it's referred to. And it's real interesting right here. Yep, right Yep, right there. It actually says that uh, February 9th, 1869. That's a very early toy. All original. It was a very popular toy at the time. Uh, it comes in a number of different versions. So this was actually the pond version. Um, they also call what's called a floor version that was on <laughs> wheels. Uh, additionally, it can come with two oarsmen. That's called the double oarsmen. Very rare. Um, single one's rare, double one, I think there's three, maybe four of them known to exist. So, nice toy. Again, it would actually work. You could wind it up, put it in a pond, and he would actually row in a realistic manner. Key mechanism goes here. He we actually do have it. the key. He yep. would wind it, and he actually 
Lower the shore. <laughs> and it, it does say Jenny as well, right here on the top. But Ray, I have a question. What is this little piece? Well, that's there? the rudder. So but it's with the, the, even the top point up? Well, yeah, so, well, so you could set the rudder wherever you want. Because a lot of times, like, again, this is a pond toy. Most little kids want the thing to go far out. So he would set the rudder like this. They would wind it up. He would go right out in the middle of the pond and they'd never see it again. Oh, the okay. smarter children <laughs> would turn it at an angle. So it would go out and it would make a circle and come back to them. Those are the ones that succeeded in life. The ones well, that, I mean, I don't know if we could go that far. The ones that put it straight, they don't quite get it. They sailed out to sea. Well, Look, he's going out to sea. <laughs> what I think is very charming. Cool. <laughs> that's like cool. What I think is very charming about that particular toy um, is that it has not only wood but cloth and tin on it. I think that it just adds a lot of, you know, I don't, I don't even know really what else to call it other than charming, but it just really adds a lot to it, and I think that it sets it apart from other toys. It does. That's, that's one of my favorites. Okay. I have a lot of favorites. But... <laughs> Too many to name. Now, this is another one of my favorites. Yes, this is an oh, early American oh, tin toy. This actually comes from my collection. I'm not sure why I'm selling it, but I am. Okay, this is a Fallows toy. It's called Dog on Base with Articulated Head. He is precious. All original, gorgeous condition. Best one known. Uh, Fallows, uh, out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they produced in the 1860s and 1870s, up until I think the early 1880s. Um, they made fabulous toys. They made a whole series of what are known are as platform toys. Um, they made a, a series of just dogs. George Brown especially you made a lot of different dogs on platforms. Dogs that would have like a basket in their mouth or various things like this. But this is one of the few toys underneath you can see the mechanism here. And when it goes, little oh, no, Fido's head actually turns see. side to side. Yeah, that's the mechanism right there, yeah. But his head does turn. So yeah, the rear wheels, when you would pull across the floor, his head, yeah, it's hard to show. It's, yeah, it's hard to show not on the table. actually but. go like this. So he has a lot of action to him. All original, original gold striping here. All this on the side, I don't know if you can see it, but that's actually highlights of white paint. So it was painted very realistically. I've had this dog in black and in white. Okay. I've never had a brown one. I don't know wow. if there was a brown one, no, but. Well, the detail on him is beautiful. I mean, even the detail on his eye there, it's really, the patina's beautiful. It's about as fine a condition of American tin toy you could possibly get. So really, top, top of its class. Really is, especially if you're a dog lover. I am. <laughs> okay, so that was our early American tin. But of course, we came all out here to this show. We couldn't forget all of our sol toy soldier well, we collectors. Soldiers too. So we had to bring some soldiers. And the first one we will show you is a mint tied in original box, Robin Hood and his Merry Men. This label is amazing. Look at all the color on it. It just pops off the screen. I think that you could display that just as is without the soldiers even. That is that true. Cool. But why don't you open them up and show them what's so inside? So I will show you all of the Merry Men and Robin Hood. So as you can see, this is very minty or sexy as Ray would call it. <laughs> <laughs> and Robin Hood's there. You have Maid Marian. You have Fire Tuck. Little John. The Archbishop. The Archbishop. The whole cast and crew. This is a complete set. Uh, you will see it unboxed. It's, a, it's rare either version, but you will see it show up unboxed, but it's very rare to have it in the original box. Nice, nice yes. example. Beautiful, beautiful set. Made uh, 1950s. So that's our Robin Hood and his married man. That's and, Robin Hood. And we're going to show, brought some large scale Heidi out here. So, the first one is right here. Oh, let me grab it. Okay, these are large scale North American Indians. Okay, these are 80 millimeter in height, so they're pretty big. The, the millimeters refer to the height of the figure, so not the height of the horse. And here we have an Indian chief with rifle, and then here's a brave with an axe. And I believe we have one other. We had brought three of them out. We do. Uh, that has, I think, a, a war club with mm -hmm. it. But shield and everything, great toys. These large scale figures have become very, very fashionable. Yes. Uh, they're probably the most popular of all the figures right now. Um, and what I like about them is they really 
work well with toys. The scale is such, is such that you can put them on a shelf with like the Lehman toys or the American Tin and mm -hmm. they stand out very well. They really do. The other large scale Heidi that we have here. Yes, these are U.S. Cavalry in red. Yeah, so these are U.S. Cavalry. Way back around the turn of the century, the U.S. Cavalry, uh, they wore red tunics or blue tunics. Red tunics with yellow um, plumes, or it would be a blue tunic with a red plume. These are 70 millimeter figures, slightly smaller, but just very colorful, beautiful set. I believe this is a set of six that we have. Yes. Um, again, about made right around 1900 uh, would be my estimate. Exquisite condition. They we are. have quite a few soldiers that we beautiful. brought to this whole, the show. It is mainly a. Uh, a toy show but uh, we do always like to represent a lot of different things we had to represent soldiers we couldn't come out here without that okay next we're moving on to the Fulton market delivery wagon so we're going back to American tin yes okay this is the Fulton market this is made by George Brown it's a delivery wagon now why I like to feature it and again this has been in my collection a long time and I think you can make it out there it yeah. says Fulton Market on the side Number there. 240. Number 240. Fulton Market later became Fulton Fish Market, located down in the Bowery of New York City. Uh, famous market. And just, I think, a, a toy that's very indicative of the time. Just has a lot of charm and charisma to it. Uh, all original, nice condition. Uh, just a, you know, a nice, nice horse-drawn toy. It is. I mean, it's a little worrisome to me that fish would be transported in this. You think they'd be refrigerated? Back then, they just, they just got those fish to market as quick as they could. See. There wasn't much in the way of refrigeration. Even in the summer? Even in the summer. Hmm. It was a little fishy down like, there. It could have been pretty market. fishy. <laughs> Very fishy. Well, but speaking I, of fish. I know. Next toy. This is actually my personal favorite that we brought here in California. This is a tin fish. And... He is just amazing. He is no, he goes by Le Carpe Fétiant. Le Carpe Fétiant? Yes. <laughs> What's that mean? It actually means the wiggling carp. It's a wiggler. And his little fin actually wiggles back and forth, which I think is very charming. He's a French mechanical tin toy, and he's animated by a rubber band motor. On so the there's inside. actually an elastic in here. I don't want to wind it because it's very fragile, but it still does have it in here. And you would wind it up, so there's a little crank mechanism in the front here. It would wind it up, it would cause tension, sort of like a rubber band airplane, and then the tail will That's actually go forth. back and forth and propel them. And this lever on the back here was the start and stop mechanism. So you would click it down, hold it in place, and you press it, press it, and it would go off. I just think it has a beautiful form, beautiful detailing. If you look. All that's very realistic, looks very nice on he there. He does, he's very nice. And uh, what's cool about the fish, not only that he's French and he beats his tail, which is kind of cool. And he doesn't sting. He doesn't sting, <laughs> <laughs> no matter what the temperature. He won a gold medal at a, a French competition for inventors called Le Concours Le Pain, which also, it was basically a competition for small toys and different manufacturers. And what was neat about this competition, not only did this particular fish actually win that, but the coffee grinder won in 1910. So this fish and the coffee grinder were invented at the same time. That's well, amazing. I mean, I don't know if they were invented exactly the well, same time. Well, they both won the competition then. They did. That's amazing. You know, this fish actually works. So going through security, they stopped me with the fish. There's actually a big ballast beam, a ballast weight in the belly of this fish. And there's little holes where it would let water in. So it would actually go in and it would partially submerge. And I believe that it would, they made it to sort of the, the bow line was right about in the middle of the fish here. Uh, and it would actually swim through the water. Yeah. Well, what's cool about him is I think that it would look neat mounted, excuse me, mounted on a wall too. Well, I agree. You put it up almost like a mount. I think it would look really pretty. And also, speaking of the airport. What happened in the airport? When I was there, or when we were there, I guess I should say, I spotted a similar toy to him. And not only does he wiggle his tail. What kind of fish is that? This fish is better than your fish. But, in my opinion, he already is better because he has candy inside of him. It's a candy fish. 
That's and, nothing. And on top of it, <laughs> he's a squirt gun. Great. <laughs> now I'm soaking wet. That's wonderful. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I like my fish better. Oh, your fish is pretty cute. He's cute. He's cute. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all right, enough of this. But silliness. in all seriousness, that's all we had to feature today. Um, we hope to see you tomorrow and Saturday at the Glendale Civic Auditorium. The show opens tomorrow at 11 a.m. We'll be there. Yep, and once I, well, as I stated at the beginning, the GlendaleShow.com, you can find the address and other specific information like pricing and all of that good stuff on there. Also exciting news, the new Old Toy Soldier magazine is out. It's here. It's in the mail. Everyone should be receiving it within the next week or so that is a subscriber. So look out for the new OTS. It is a good issue, as always. Very good one. Oh, wait. we got air, don't we? Oh, I so, do. I so do have cover. it. I do have it. There's That's the cover. Feeder, featuring the Britain's Bow Fighter, which is a very rare Britain's piece. Uh, it's actually the plane that Dennis Britain's flew in World War II. Uh, there are only a couple examples known. And, we're actually going to be selling this example in our um, November sale or October sale October. of um, Old Toy Soldier auctions. Speaking of October sales, on the auction front, we have two epic sales lined up for October 14th. We're doing it a little bit differently than we usually do. We're having a morning session and an afternoon session. But the morning session features this gentleman that goes by the name of Ivy Melquire. And as you can see, he has a lot of character there, so we have a lot more to tell you about him, and we're going to be doing a broadcast prior to this auction, where we're going to teach you a lot more. There's a lot it's to be said. quite an interesting collection. There's a lot of history behind this collection. It actually was formed, primarily the base of the collection was formed in the late 1800s. Yes. Uh, and it's sort of been passed down through the family since then. It's been in the family for about 150 years. And it's years. from here in California. Yeah, we picked it up here actually one year ago today. So which is amazing. That is the first session. And the second session, if you're familiar with our investment rarity sales, they are world class. They are the best of the best. The Bill Jackie Collection Part 2 is going to begin at noon. As you can see, there are over 200 lots. They're not all pictured here in our little preview flyer. But if you are a Britain's collector, these are a must-have for your collection, so you definitely want to look out for them. And our next broadcast is yeah. going to be from London. He's excited. So excited. I can jump off this balcony into the ocean right now. It's Friday, September 8th, and we the time is to be announced, but we're going for the Norman Joplin Toy Soldier Show in Russell Square. London? Yes. I know, that's going to be terrific. London. Uh, I hope everyone watches. It's going to be a very good run. Cannot wait. So stay tuned for September 8th. And with that being said, we hope to see you in Glendale tomorrow. And surf's up. Thanks for watching. Everyone, see ya and enjoy the sunset. Bye now. Bye.